All right, it's that time we've all been waiting for. Ever since the A300 series launch, we were hoping Intel's Arc Atexture can perform anywhere near an NVIDIA graphics card with current generation stuff. So today we have benchmarked, and I have spent days upon days playing with it, getting to know it, getting to understand its nuances and what you should expect if you're considering adopting the Arc A770 or A750, especially on day one. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. What? We got work to do. Yeah, I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II recreated with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving 7 days premium time, 1 million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier 5 premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. Uh, fun fact, if you guys like our GPU stands, Nick made them. He made them with his own brain and our own 3D printers. I don't know, maybe maybe we'll put the STL up at a repository somewhere someday. Anyway, this is like the battle of the mid-range, if you will. So we already talked previously about the Intel Arc um, kind of mindset is the fact that we're all really accustomed to seeing brands, AMD and Nvidia specifically, starting at the top of their stacks and working their way down because they want to have like who's got the who's got the biggest bro flex of anyone. Intel, on the other hand, was just like, you know what? Just start at the bottom, work our way up. So that's what the 700 series is. Now, for this particular launch and the 40 series launch for NVIDIA when that comes out, this time around I have a completely new suite of benchmarks. All the old benchmark sheet, which has thousands upon thousands of data entry points in there, has been retired and we literally have started from square one all over again with new titles, titles that are more modern, titles that definitely use different types of engine. It's interesting because it created a scenario where um, there, you really can see where Intel Arc shines and where 6000 series AMD shines and where Nvidia shines. Because here's the thing, now that you have three competitors on the market. It's gonna be, well, it's gonna be 50% more confusing on which card to go with, depending on which titles you play and the engines that they're at and the resolutions that you're using and the platform that you've got it on. Because like I said in my previous video, if you wanna use Intel Arc, you have to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind a little bit here. I'll talk about the Intel um, Arc and rebar stuff at the end of the video. Let's just start with the benchmarks and I'm gonna go through them one at a time and sort of explain some of the nuances with each title and what I've experienced with my, uh, all of the, the hours I've got now playing with these cards.
So the cards that were used here specifically, obviously the limited edition cards from Intel. So that means the 770 is the 16 gigabyte version, which has the RGB lighting and stuff around the edge. Same thing with the uh, 750, it's the limited edition card, but no RGB lighting. Um, also doesn't have a different memory um, build out. The AMD card that we're using here, the 6600 XT is an XFX Merc card. Um, it is, we put, we use that because it's funny, we have to kind of look at the price point and the tier of product when we're comparing ARC. And obviously we have to include AMD in that because there are three players when it comes to graphics cards. But Intel didn't even show any comparisons at all to AMD. They have Nvidia square in their sites. It's funny though, looking at those charts, I feel like some people might walk away going, you know what, I'm not getting Intel and I'm not getting Nvidia, I'm getting AMD. AMD when it comes to rasterization performance is amazing. Um, we'll talk about RT as well, because if you looked at the RT charts, there's there's some stuff worth talking about there. For, I don't have it on the table here, um, but the card that we use for the 3060, there is no 3060 Founders Edition. It's a 3060 Ti Founders Edition, but no 3060 Founders. Uh, we use the Asus Tough, not the Strix, which in my in my opinion is very over expensive and overcooled and overbuilt. Um, you don't get anything extra for that level of quality of build of cooler and stuff. So the tough was a, a good card to go with. And they all land right around the same price point of a median price of about 390 to 400. Remember the Intel Arc A770 MSRP for the limited edition card is 379. So that's worth pointing out. Borderlands 3, 100% an AMD title. We've talked about this in the past when 30 series launched versus 6000 series. I am almost 100% positive based on the results I've always seen. Borderlands 3 has a, a, a draw call execution that basically says, if not AMD, new to performance, specifically Nvidia. However, the ARC graphics cards really held their own against the 6600 XT. 79 FPS versus 105. So if you're running 1080p and that's the only game you play, the 6600 XT would be the card you want to go with. But it's fun. It's funny though, when you look at Nvidia though, it is just completely, uh, completely neutered in terms of performance. Even the 1440p performance of the A770 versus the 3060 on that particular title, it's just it's worth talking about because it's, it's a weird anomaly. Cyberpunk, this is a weird one. Cyberpunk gave me one of the most consistent problems with getting consistent results on the ARC a texture. I'm, I'm going to make that stupid joke. The ARC, the ARC graphics cards. We found that unless you choose the settings and the resolution and then apply and then exit the game and re-enter the game and run them and then make a setting and then leave the game and enter the game, we got crazy fluctuations. These results are the most consistent results I was able to get by finally figuring out the weird nuance of making a setting and, and it was just the ARC cards that it was doing this with. The benchmark is kind of newer in, in Cyberpunk and so I don't know if if it's just a weird nuance in there. But holy cow, did it did it do well. RT off, faster than 3060, 72 FPS in 1080, versus 64 in the 3060, uh, and then 45 FPS in 1440 versus 41. That, that's a very demanding title. It's probably the most demanding title on the entire suite. So that's just a straight up horsepower test. When we take a look at RT, it was like neck and neck with the 3060. The poor AMD card, we all know first gen RT for AMD wasn't the greatest. It just had to check the, the box of saying it's a feature that it has. Um, it's also important to note that in all these tests, we don't have XCSS running for any of the Intel stuff. We don't have um, FSR or FSR 2.0 running for any of the AMD stuff, nor DLSS 2.0 or 3.0 for any of the a, uh, NVIDIA test. And the reason for that one, it's not a 40, 40 series card, so there is no 3.0 for it, but I'm testing straight up, non-upscaling, just, just rendering performance of the card itself. It is nuts to see that Intel's first gen RT core is comparative to Nvidia's second gen. And you'll see that throughout the test. Now it does depend on the title. Um, and it's not playable at 29 FPS on both cards at 1080p and 18 and 19 respectively for 1440. But again, putting it under that level of load, I mean, the difference is, it's crazy to see in, in uh, I almost said NVIDIA's, in, I'm not gonna get used to saying Intel graphics. Intel Arc's first gen RT core is just on par with NVIDIA's in, in certain titles. So Forza Horizon 5, that's a, another AMD title because that's an Xbox title. And you remember Forza Horizon 5 was designed for like the Xbox Series X and the, you know, and consoles, very optimized for AMD. So AMD, just 6600 XT, just clear winner in that one. But again, edging out the 3060 is the A770. And then just right on its heels is the A750 at $329 versus $400 plus for the 3060. So in terms of like 
price to dollar, price to performance ratio, the 750, just like the chart showed on Intel, is absolutely correct in terms of being a better value. I didn't go through and do the math to see if it's up to that 53% they talk about, but it's pretty significant. Gears of War 5, um, interesting title because of the fact that it Arc just hated that, which is scary because that's Unreal 5. That is a very common engine used in many titles being developed now and future titles coming out. This is something that will more than likely be addressed in future drivers. However, Gears of War 5 or Gears 5 just absolutely hated Arc. I, I don't know why. I spent a lot of time regression testing that, double checking settings, reinstalling drivers, just making sure there's no weirdness happening there. If you're if you're a diehard Gears 5 player, then you're not gonna want ARC until this it, situation is fixed. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen this kind of thing. I've seen this with NVIDIA on other titles. I've seen this with AMD on certain titles. It's just gonna take time for the drivers to improve. There's, no, there's just no way around it. First generation, first brand new architecture with developers trying to backwards compatible for it, it takes time. Guardians of the Galaxy RT off. Um, Pretty significant drop off between the 770 and the 750. What's interesting about that is the 750 is, is 7 eighths of the spec of the 770. So you would think the performance to scale to that, that ratio, but it's not. For some reason, the 750 fell off hard. Don't know why, can't understand it. But in terms of 1440p performance, only one FPS difference between the 3060 and the A770, um, you'll notice quite a bit of a less of a 1080p performance um, closeness there. There's a bigger gap, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a moment here. When we tried to run ray tracing on on the A750, it just completely would not run. It runs fine on the A770. In fact, the performance is, um, you know, it, it, it's behind the 3060. Again, that, that Guardians of the Galaxy um, engine is just favoring NVIDIA, which is fun. You're going to see this type of battle taking place, but the ARC 750, or uh, the A750 just would not run. I was getting complete lockups in the window. The window would minimize, I'd come back up, it's just a black screen. I, it would completely lock up the system, ran it multiple times, finally gave up, told Phil, just put anomalous test results on there, put no number because it does not run. Metro Exodus, however, whatever that is running on, and I forget the, the details of it, every game should be running that, in my opinion, because ARC absolutely loved Exodus, both without ray tracing and ray traced lighting. It is nuts how far, it is 82 FPS on the 770 versus the 3060, 58 in 1080p. And then in 1440, 57 versus 41. With RT on, absolutely nuts. I only ran that title with RT on uh, because I use that just specifically as a ray tracing test that uses, remember ray tracing has a lot of different ways you can implement it. Shadows, bounce lighting, reflections, you know, part of ambient occlusion. There's a lot of ways you can actually run ray tracing and, and Exodus just has a really good implementation of it in terms of ARC absolutely loving it. And then you take a look at the 6600 XT and it's kind of like the opposite of like, it's like Borderlands for NVIDIA. Actually, it's more like Borderlands for Intel versus AMD. So this is why I chose this suite. It's got a, a huge amount of fluctuation in there. Port Royal, I don't know if these results are factual. Now there is a specific build for 3D Mark coming out specifically for XCSS. We didn't run that. We have a different video regarding DLSS versus XCSS. However, Port Royal just curb stomp NVIDIA and AMD. Just, I don't know why. I ran the test over and over and over and got the same results every time. Don't know why, but as you can see in the ray tracing performance gaps in real games, it's not nearly as wide as it shows in a synthetic. It just synthetics really expand the cards that are doing better uh, almost artificially widening the gap, but it's crazy how, how well it performed. In fact, the A770 was performing on par with like a 2080 Ti. It's nuts. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, AMD title. It's never really hit that. It's performing very well with RT off on AMD. Nearly identical numbers on the uh, 1080p for NVIDIA. However, 86 FPS versus 80 FPS in 1440p. So the Intel Arc 770 was faster than, than NVIDIA in 1440. Arteon, very similar story, only in 1080p, they're matched, and then again, faster in Intel Arc and Ray Tracing. So it really kind of shows just how close together they are. And then Time Spy Extreme, same thing, 3D Mark on the Arc just, just ran away with the performance. I, I, don't, I don't know if, if I believe those numbers, I just wanted to show you what the results were. Let's talk about those 1080p numbers real quick. You might notice, in some tests, Intel Arc, Specifically the A770, um, because in my opinion, the A770, that's the true competitor to the 3060 
The 750 really is closer to like a 3050 Ti and like a 6600 non-XT. I don't have a non-XT card. This is all I had. So I couldn't compare those for you yet. We're gonna talk specifically about the A770 now. In 1440p, it was in the test that it was faster than NVIDIA on the 3060, those same tests, it was either matching 1080p performance or sometimes a little bit lower. We think there's driver overhead issues happening here. We know that when it comes to 1080p performance, when we start really bringing up the FPS, um, there's a lot happening there, specifically with the resize bar. Obviously that needs to be on. We'll talk about resize bar in a second. I just think this can be one of those things where as the driver matures, we'll see that 1080p performance really start to, to, to eke out. But I do believe Intel is placing the ARC 770 specifically at 1440p gamers. It's just the first time we've seen a card perform at a better performance versus another brand at 1440 than a higher resolution. So 1080p performance wasn't bad. It's just obviously the NVIDIA drivers and the architecture is just way more um, matured at 1080p for whatever reason than our ARC 14 uh, was at 1440 and 1080. So my recommendation is if you're running a 1080p panel, you'd probably want to get a 1440p panel and then run ARC, or you're going to have to deal with the knowing there's performance left on the table, then um, waiting for the driver to update and then get that performance back. So the good news is though, is if you adopt ARC, there's potentially going to be driver updates that really do start to show performance improvements, just like we've seen happen with Radeon's RDNA. So that's nothing new. We saw that with RDNA, we're just seeing it with Intel now. But when you talk about its performance out of the box, uh, all of these settings were with 190 watt settings. If you go into the ARC control, you can expand that to 228 watts. All of these are out of the box settings on AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel. No overclocking, no additional power limit. Heck, there's not even a fan control in the Intel ARC that I could find um, to allow us to be able to speed up fans if we wanted. The A770 never got any hotter than 75C with a 90C TJ Maxx, so 15C of headroom. And it was very quiet. It didn't, it wasn't intrusive. And heck, even the side panel was off the case. I think for a first gen, it's really, really, really good, especially for the RT performance. But there's a big, giant, fat asterisk. And we need to talk about that. Every single time I close the game, the refresh rate of desktop would reset itself to 60 Hertz. I have 144 Hertz panel. It's 4K BFGD 65 inch monitor, not a TV, with 144 Hertz refresh rate. But every single time I left a title, it would go back to 60. Extremely annoying. We also had weirdness where certain titles like Hitman would load in this super stretched out half screen width. One time, the, the, it, the, the camera fell through the floor in the benchmark and started falling. I, I was just like, what the hell is happening? And the guys were like, what? I'm like, the benchmark camera fell through the floor and we are now falling under the map in the benchmark. I'd never seen that before. And then trying to reproduce it so I can actually get it on film, I found the spot at which it happens. It's when the chandelier falls and the big sparks come out and you see it kind of glitch out for a second there and, and that you just saw that right now. That was when it actually fell through the floor. Couldn't get it to reproduce. And then it started launching fine with full screen. Every time I ran it, there were less bugs and then it started running fine. So that was really weird. In fact, in Guardians, it broke so bad with the A750 that the monitor's status light that's yellow when it's in standby, red when it's off and white when it's on, was like discoing. It was like red, yellow, red, red off, yellow, red, red, yellow, off. It was like, God, the card was like, I don't know. It's just like mashing buttons. So. Again, drivers, I'm sure. Those are the kind of things that you're gonna expect and you're gonna adopt the very first time a company comes out the gate with something like this. I have no doubt they're gonna fix it, they have to. You can't get, expect people to adopt bugs, but you're going to, if you're if you were a bleeding edge adopter, you're gonna have bugs. It's You've had bugs with every single launch of every graphics card ever. It's just, they're a little bit more pronounced on Intel because of the fact that it's a third player with a whole new approach to how graphics are being done and it takes time for drivers and Windows and game developers to really sort of program for their nuances. Okay, and then lastly, let's talk about resizable bar. Cause I I really wanted to test Tom A. Peterson's like, turn it on, turn it on, just turn it in, on. Intel Arc architecture is more turn sensitive. <laughs> when I turned off rebar, saw a pretty significant hit across the board, 20, 30 FPS. And it's weird because the overall performance was smooth. It wasn't glitchy, it wasn't stuttery. There weren't big pauses. It was just slower. It was like you took, that, you took the performance and just let's lower it 20, 30 FPS at 1080 and 15, 20 FPS at 1440p. And it was just as smooth of an experience of consistency, it just was slower. And that's because the frame pacing and such was longer, but consistent. 
Remember, what people notice with stutters and fluctuations is the fluctuations. It's the, the frame pacing that goes from like five milliseconds, 15, two, 20, 22, nine, you know, it's that. It, if the frame pacing, which is the time it takes to draw the frame, is consistent, then it's perceived as smoother, even though it may be a lower FPS. And that's exactly what I experienced there, lower FPS across the board. Uh, but resizable bar is a feature everyone should have on if it's available to you. There's no reason not to have it off, uh, on at all. Do I recommend the cards? I, I recommend them once the drivers are fully vetted out. Remember, we're on, we're on early drivers. These are, these are probably not the same drivers that will be shipping alongside the cards and what's available on their website. And I bet you we see a lot of driver updates over the next few months as other game developers come up with, with various profiles and stuff for their, pro, their games designed for these cards, you're gonna see game profile updates and they're all distributed through drivers. 1440p gamers, I feel like you could buy it on day one and not have too many issues. Now, we only sample a very small section of games in the market, but it's gonna really depend on your title. 1080p, definitely wait for the drivers because there is, there is performance left on the table that's gonna be fixed with driver headroom. But I feel like, a lot of people might watch, look at these benchmarks and almost just say the 6600 XT is the card that you're gonna go for. It's around the same price as the Arc. But you know what? For the first time in history, well, recent history, you have three options. NVIDIA, AMD, Radeon, and Intel. And what I'm most excited for right now is what the A900 series brings, because that's gonna be more than likely aimed right at the 70 slash 70 Ti 6800 XT type of card. That's where things start to get fun and exciting, but they cannot bring you the max performance until they get the whole architecture sort of vetted out and sorted, starting from the bottom up. Sound off down below. Was this something that uh, you were looking forward to? Is the performance where you expected it to be? And is it enough to win you over and say, screw you Nvidia, screw you AMD, I'm going Intel. Like I said before, a lot of people are kind of upset at Intel CPU side and they have been for a while, but they're really like rejoicing for the Intel side or the GPU side. So confusing now. Sound off down below. Have they won you over or are you gonna wait and see? Remember, Intel's the one that said everyone was gonna wait and see about AMD CPUs. Are people gonna wait and see about Intel GPUs? What a backwards ass world we live in right now.